So this is for serious grinding. Then I picked up a package of these flap discs. This is for the not so serious grinding. And then for the totally not serious grinding, we have this. Ono Grinds, that's for my Hawaii friends. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. One of the dilemmas on a big project like this is where to start. It's hard to know, like there's so much stuff to do and should you do this, should you do that? Uh, and so the mantra that I've kind of adopted is do anything, even if it's wrong, just do something. And that really gets you going down the road and if you make mistakes you can fix them. But otherwise, you can just sit there uh, stalled out forever, not getting anything done. So this guy here was the first piece of glass I put on the boat. First and second, actually, because there's two layers. And it was also the first mistake I made. Uh, so I don't know that it got as good of a bond as I wanted right on the edge of this here. And then this piece of glass folded over the second layer. And it, so it didn't attach to the core as well as I wanted here. Beautiful things about working with fiberglass. And I, I tell this with everybody that I work with over on Patreon. Uh, you know, when someone's doing this for the first time, there's bound to be mistakes. And basically what I always reinforce is that the nice thing about working with fiberglass is that for the most part, there's really nothing that you can do that can't easily be fixed. The plan was to feather this back on both sides and put another layer here. But before I do that, I'm going to cut this all back and uh, relay the glass uh, in here and basically rebuild this whole post on the inside. It's a bit discouraging when you spend I have to spend a couple hours undoing what you did the other day. So on the other ones I've learned, number one, either use putty underneath like I did on the other one so that it's flat before, the, um, before it hits the core so that the core lays flat on the glass. And also I screwed screws into the core with plywood on top to squish it down to hold it in tight. For those of you that are waiting to hear about the different resins, I had to push that off for another week because of my work schedule and what I got going on. However, I do have lots of footage of showing working on the boat this week. And next week, I'm gonna to try to get that video on resins out. This clip doesn't exactly show all the clips because I put quite a few layers of glass up, but it does kind of show at least a little bit of each of, it, of, each of the steps. mix the the resin I'm always mixing it on a scale uh, some people have use the little CC automatic mixer but I haven't figured out exactly how that works it's just really easy for me to, to use the scale and I have to do it in small quantities right now because it's just so hot that the resin kicks really fast that I follow is first I, I wet out the surface and, and make sure that there's going to be enough resin on that to stick and then I'll go over to my laminating table and I'm just using a plastic bag uh, under the cloth and I wet out the cloth really good. After I wet out the cloth I'll squeegee out any excess resin that I have. That also takes some of the air bubbles out. Uh, and make sure that it's fully wet out at this point. And it, sometimes it looks a little bit like it's not fully wet out because some of the wrinkles in the, in the plastic underneath, but it's, it's fully wet out at this point. Then I'll put that up. And, and one of the things that I found when I put it up, because it was such an angle, uh, it would tend to fall back down. And so after a couple tries, it kept falling on my arm and I couldn't get it to stay, couldn't get it to stay. So finally what I figured out is, you, you, once you wet it out, you gotta wait till the exact right moment where the, where the resin is just starting to get a little bit tacky and then it would get enough tack that it would actually stick up there and I could, I could fin roll it up there and, and it would actually stay. And then I would also add a little bit extra resin to it uh, and that would help it stay. 
And then as it would start to set up, I would squeegee the excess resin out as well as then apply some peel ply because that would help suck up the extra resin and pull that out. So I'm back the next day to take a look at the repairs where I made my first mistake to check out how it is. And check this out. So one time when I was building my house, some guy was going to come help me work on it uh, that was recommended to me. Uh, and, and he came and looked at it when I wasn't there uh, just to kind of see what, what, what what's up. And I may, uh, when I work, I make such a mess and I just throw things all over the place and I'm climbing over mess that uh, there was no way he could even work there. And so <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't think so. Uh, so you can see here, whenever I work, it's just a disaster. Everything is an absolute mess. I'm actually relatively efficient with this because, you know, I don't spend any extra time cleaning up uh, than I need to and I just get as much done as I can. Uh, but there comes a point where I start spending a lot of time trying to find stuff or if I'm spending a lot of time stepping on stuff or breaking stuff, then uh, I know it's time to clean up. And I think this is getting pretty much ready to clean up. <laughs> Look at that disaster. I got it a little bit more cleaned up in here. Kind of organized a bit. Ready to start working again. Flap discs, where have you been all my life? This is way easier than the sander. I I'm pretty happy with these ones I got. They're just cheap ones. But uh, it is way faster than the sander for, for uh, grinding this down. This, this took me uh, maybe a quarter of the time. Uh, and then it does, you gotta be careful that you don't grind too much away because it's pretty aggressive. Maybe I'll try a, a lower grit, I mean a higher grit. Uh, but then I'm just gonna come back through the sander, clean this up, and it'd be ready to patch up. One of the things that you wanna note is these just started as little cracks, but what I did is I ground them down so that they're so that all of the crack is actually gone and there's no cracked glass, and then round the edges. And you want that, that bottom rounded not come to a point so that it doesn't create a a hard point for that crack to try to propagate again. So after I finish grinding this down and feather it, I'll come back through and I'll wipe it down with acetone. And after I get it wiped down with acetone, then I come back in with a structural filler. And that structural filler will go in basically to, to help smooth out that part where it binds to the foam core. Then I'll cut my fabric. Uh, layered so that each layer is progressively bigger. Then I take it on the laminating table, laminate it all down, wet out the surface first of where it's going to go, and then put it on and thin roll it down. After that, put some peel ply on, soak up the excess resin, and let it cure. Because this glass is so thick uh, with the triaxle, it's hard to really get the edges of it to feather. And so what I do is after I lay the glass, I'll come back down between sequential layers and feather the end. The thing that you want to be careful of is that you don't sand through important layers. Like you want to not sand through the unidirectional in this triaxial glass. You want to make sure you're just sanding the mat off. Um, and, and so here I put a little bit of filler, that's a vinyl ester filler, uh, in where it kind of makes the transition from the old glass to the new glass. And then I start cutting my new glass. And one of the things that you'll notice is on all my stuff I try to do rounded corners. You don't want to come to a sharp point uh, with any of the stuff you're doing. You want to make sure it all comes to rounded corners and feathers out. The other thing uh, is the amount of feathering. You want about a 12 to 1 ratio, maybe 20, 24 to 1 if you're just repairing on one side. And because this is uh, 5 millimeter, 4 or 5 millimeter glass, that works out to about 3.9, almost 4, 4 inches of feathering. Uh, and, and so I've done more than that here. Uh, in, in, uh, in, and that's what you're seeing there is just the first layer and the sequential layers will keep getting bigger and bigger and I actually end up grinding that gel coat even back farther. So one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm using the exact lamination schedule from the factory because when you repair something you don't want the glass a lot thicker or you certainly don't want it any thinner and if you do make it thicker you can get away with a little bit thicker as long as you feather it back 
And so that if it is thicker, that it kind of transitions, especially on, on like that post where we basically have support to support. Uh, what you don't want to do is end up with a really thick part piece of glass inside a thinner piece of glass because then that will create hard points around it. And so what I'm doing here, like on that bottom section, uh, that's all original glass. I just ground it back so that I could tie in that post and have, have a really good bond for everything tying back so that we can make sure that this is strong as or stronger than original. And, and then you also want to be careful as you do this that you don't end up grinding back uh, too much glass or grinding into your glass because if you grind into your primary glass layers you're actually going to start cutting especially on some of the more uh, exotic fabrics like the unidirectional and such, such and so I'm really careful not to grind into the unidirectional glass. Well, I came back at night to finish up the, I came back at night to finish, <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> I came back at night to finish up around the window with the final glass layers. Uh, I'm a little too tired to film. So here I'm just doing a little bit of of cleanup and, and feathering of the edges with the sander. And the next step that I'm gonna to need to accomplish here is to get that window cut out because I made the post uh, on purpose. I made it wider and just let the glass hang over uh, so that I could trim it to the right size. And so it took me a while to figure out exactly where the original plate position was. Uh, fortunately, I had the, the original post. Uh, so I put that in and I measured a, a course from the other side and make sure everything's flat. Uh, and so then I can mark that and then start the cutout on it. Some days things go well, some days not so well. I uh, kept getting rained out today. Uh, so I couldn't get a lot of good footage, but I did manage to start the initial cutout for the window. Now it's cut a little oversized so I can trim it down. Uh, and I'll probably do that later, but it's ready to fare. I wanted to fare the outside. Uh, but it's just too rainy today. It rains and then it's sunny and then it rains and then it's sunny and I just uh, I'm sick of it. I'm burnt out. I'm going home for today, but uh, we'll get it next weekend If you were mildly entertained by this video or if you've got some useful information out of it Please give me the thumbs up. Please like the video because it really helps uh, me promote this and Make it so that I'll be able to continue making more videos like this